guys, it's Kevin the Murphy for you guys. We're reviewing this a movie that I really did not know how it was going to turn out, but I figured I'd check it out, and that, of course, is Midnight Sun. And what Midnight Sun is essentially about is we center on the character of Katie Price, and basically she is this girl who has a very rare condition of XP, which essentially means she cannot go out into sunlight. She is pretty much uh, locked in her room for the duration of a day, but at night she's able to roam around, and throughout all of her time, you know, in seclusion pretty much, she has been kind of stalking this guy named Shark and she runs into him one night and pretty much from here these two kind of start a relationship and she has to try to figure out if they can possibly maintain it despite her having this condition and that's really all I'm gonna say. So Midnight Sun in general, I just did not care about this movie to be honest with you. Uh, this looks incredibly derivative, it looked really just very mediocre, so been there done that and I'm not a huge fan of these romance films. There really wasn't much in this film that I was looking forward to. However, I was hoping that this could be somewhat better than some of, you know, Bella Thorne's other efforts, which we'll get into a little bit. Um, and I will say Midnight Sun isn't that bad, but it's not good either. This is a very, very derivative movie that is incredibly bland, and there's really nothing that great about it. I've already pretty much forgotten about it, but we're just getting into right now, starting off with the cast. And going into this film, that was something I was hoping, and that mainly is for Bella Thorne, who, to say last year she had a very rough year would be an understatement, honestly. Last year was one of the worst years I have seen for any actress, to be honest with you. It was so consistently terrible for her between You Get Me and The Babysitter and Amityville The Awakening, and does this redeem her somewhat? I will say this. In the quieter scenes in this movie, she does do an okay job. She does uh, convey some sort of feeling, and, you know, the scenes where she isn't really freaking out, I do think she was okay. Any scene where she's supposed to freak out or have any sort of, like, huge reaction, she's not good. She really is not a good actress, and this movie really does show that to me. I think the Duff, honestly, was just a fluke. That was just a film that she worked in the role, and, you know, she did what she needed to do, but she's just not really that great of an actress, and she's trying, definitely. It's not like she's not trying or anything. I just don't particularly think Thorne is that strong of an actress, so a lot of the scenes where you're supposed to feel bad for her and you're supposed to feel a lot of emotion feel very weightless and it mainly is because of Thorne's lack of ability as an actress and I don't really think she was that great here and is an improvement over her other movies but you know after what she did in some of those films I think honestly anything is. However, that is nothing compared to the incredibly bland and almost robotic performance from Patrick Schwarzenegger. Now, I have never seen this actor before. Obviously, I've seen Arnold Schwarzenegger, but I really hope I don't again because he's terrible. He is absolutely atrocious in this movie. Uh, he, he, he's saying he's going through the motions, honestly, uh, would really be putting it lightly because he just... He doesn't have any sort of emotions whatsoever. There are points in this movie where he's supposed to be like the, uh, you know, the pretty boy and the one that girls are going to swoon over, and it just comes across as really creepy, honestly. And these two are very devoid of chemistry. There are some scenes where I saw, like, a little bit of chemistry, but there really isn't much there, to be honest with you. And again, it really is Schwarzenegger's fault. He just, compared to Thorn, uh, you know, he is, Thorn compared to him is, is like um it is like Daniel Day Lewis or something. He is a terrible actor. I really don't want to see him in anything else, and uh he really was pretty bad here. Everyone else, though, to be honest with you, I didn't think was that bad. Quinn Shepard once again gives a really great performance uh as Katie's friend. I actually really liked her as a character of Morgan. Uh there's not really a lot for her to do in this movie, but when she's on screen, she is quite good. And Shepard, you know, the only other thing I've seen her in prior to this was Blame, and uh she really is showing to me how great of an actor she is. That's nothing compared to Rob Riggle here, because Rob Riggle, I mean, sure, this is a really dumb movie. 
the way Rob Riggle acts, you would think this is an Oscar. I mean, he acts the shit out of this movie, and credit is really due to him, honestly. There's one scene with him where he talks about, like, the regrets he has as a father, the things that him and Katie have not been able to do, and I really felt it, to be honest with you. Like, I, I really did feel for Riggle. He really got into this role, put in a lot more effort than was really needed, and I was really impressed by him. He honestly did a really great job here, and, uh, you know, the acting here is mostly good. It's just really those two really aren't that great in the movie. And so, yeah, the acting's very kind of up and down for me. Now let's get to the directing and the writing because I'll say this right off the bat. There's nothing different about this directing. I mean, every sort of emotionally manipulative thing you can think of is in this movie. I mean, there really isn't anything different here. It is so overdramatic at points. It tries to be funny, and sometimes it works, and sometimes it really doesn't at all. Uh, some of the dramatic moments I do think are well handled. That's largely because of Rob Riggle's ability. Uh, the directing here is just kind of all over the place. It doesn't really know what it wants to be? Is it trying to be this like cute, sweet romance film? Or is it trying to be like a tragic movie? It just, it feels a bit confused and I don't really think the tone was that well executed here. Uh, the story especially though is very underwritten. I mean, there really is not much to the story. First of all, let's talk about our main character here because Katie again, you know, despite the fact that Thorne is really not that great in this role, um, it really doesn't help that her character is honestly a really unlikable. I mean, there's so many points in this movie where she doesn't just put herself at risk, but she's putting um, the boy that she really does love at risk as well. And you're like, wow, this, this character is incredibly unlikable. Like, she's really bitchy in this movie, and there's so many things where it's like, why am I supposed to like her, honestly? I just, I did not understand why we're supposed to root for this character when she keeps putting him in all these terrible situations. Because really, throughout this movie, I mean, again, Charlie's pretty creepy, I will say that. There are a lot of scenes when the do come across as quite, quite creepy, but that's because of how bad Schwarzenegger is as an actor. Um... Katie in this movie is just really not a very likable character, and there's so many points in this movie where you're just kind of questioning, you know, why we're supposed to really like her, and what it really is about her that really makes her that great. Their relationship in general, it actually isn't rushed. I was pretty surprised. They do take their time with this relationship, surprisingly, and I was overall um, surprised by that. There are some good scenes between them. Any scene involving her wanting to be a singer and him trying to help her with her career, I do think it was well done. Uh, and they do make attempts at trying to flesh out these two characters, but there's just really not much to them. And I don't really think uh, they did as much as they really could have here. That's nothing compared to Quinn Shepard here. Quinn Shepard is incredibly underused in this movie. There are plot points with her that are honestly really interesting and then they just get dropped halfway throughout this film only because, I don't know, they ran out of time or something. I mean, I don't know what happened here, but they introduced this really interesting plot point with her, and I thought they were going to take it somewhere, and they don't really do anything with it, and I don't really know why, to be honest with you. I think we could have gotten a lot more with this character, and uh, we really didn't, and I wanted more from her. I really did, because, again, when Shepard's on screen, it's actually really good, and I actually was quite into it, but when she's not, it does get quite bland, because, again, these just two actors, they're not selling the roles in the way you want them to, and because of that, what goes on the writing uh, just doesn't really work, and uh, also the whole thing with her having XP as well, it pretty much is used as a plot device, it really is, and it's not, doesn't really make a lot of sense, like obviously she can't go into sunlight, yet there are scenes in this movie where she's going to like his basketball game, and I understand obviously they're in the car or whatever, but what about when she gets out, like what, what are they going to do about that, she can't, if she, you know, if her skin, you know, even the smallest part of her skin touches sunlight, Sunlight, just like her fingertips or something, she, you know, 
automatically like is exposed to it. So, you know, when she's uh, at this game, you're like, why is she going out? Why is she doing this? It just, it does not make any sense. And the film does try to make sense of it, but it's just dumb. It really is. And there's so many things I think they could have thought about. Like imagine, you know, obviously she has XP. What if it's like a rainy day? What if it's like cloudy outside and there isn't sun? Like that's something they could have done. You know, there isn't any sun out. Then maybe they can go out. But no, this film isn't clever enough in doing that. It doesn't really think about these things. It's just pretty much uh, going through the motions and it just does not really work, I have to say. I don't think that it was very well handled. There's one scene in particular with her that I found incredibly laughable and it definitely was not supposed to be at all. Uh, but also, like I said, there are a lot of plot points dropped throughout this film. There's this one girl who you think they're going to start like a love triangle and thankfully they didn't because it would have been really dumb. Uh, but at least it would have been something interesting because throughout this film it does not really feel like there is that much of a narrative here and it does very much at points feel like we're uh, just kind of waiting for the story to start. Throughout the whole film it kind of feels the way and it, I sh definitely should not be feeling that. Um, the cinematography here it's okay you know they do what they need to do with it. Uh, a lot of it you know, it's just basic cinematography. The score is, well, I will say, there are actually some really good songs in this movie. There's a whole plot point about how Katie wants to be this singer, and I do think some of the songs in the film were quite catchy. One of them is very annoyingly catchy. I've been singing it ever since I saw the movie, and I really wish it would get out of my head because it's a very annoying song, but hey, it's catchy, so I mean, I, I guess it did its job in the editing. I mean, I guess the movie's well-paced for the most part. It's very short. Like, I was surprised by how short this movie really was. Um, but, yeah, ultimately, the main problem with this movie, like I said, are just the two actors. They're not very good together. And throughout the whole movie, I kept thinking... What if you replaced Bella Thorne and put her in Quinn Shepard's role? And, and once you do that the movie suddenly becomes better because Shepard is much more capable of an actress and she could really elevate this role and take it to new heights and maybe, you know, give us the sympathy that we want for this character. You know, she really could have given her more layers and, you know, if you take Bella Thorne and, and put her in Morgan's role and you put Morgan in Katie's role, suddenly the movie is a lot better. But sadly, that is not the case. What we are left with here is just a very very boring film. I will say, though, the ending of this movie is actually very effective. I do think they handled the ending pretty well, and I was quite surprised considering how much I didn't really care about this character. I do think the ending was well handled overall. It's tragic. It is uh, very inevitable, and I do think it was overall well handled. But other than that, guys, Midnight Sun is just a very, very forgettable, very mediocre, very derivative movie. There's just not really much good about it and I am going to give Midnight Sun overall a C minus. But overall, guys, in my review of Midnight Sun, let me know what you guys thought of this overall. Love your thoughts, and we'll see you guys in my next video. And I will see you guys for that. Okay, bye.